Now that we've actually walked through what our intermolecular forces are, um, let's look a little bit more closely at their strength and the effect on physical properties of um, samples of different molecules. Um, so as we said before, our intermolecular forces are uh, London dispersion, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonding interactions. And these increase in strength from London dispersion up to hydrogen bonding. Um, and so we, we can, some of our common physical properties will be the ones that describe when a uh, substance changes phases. And so a uh, boiling point is gonna describe when a liquid becomes a gas. And a melting point will describe when a solid becomes a liquid. And these temperatures that they happen at, so the, the point is really the temperature, it's going to be um, a reflection of how strong the intermolecular forces are in between the molecules in that sample. So as we have more intermolecular forces, we'll see higher boiling points and higher melting points. And what we mean by more is overall strength. And so if something has only London dispersion forces, right here, an example of this would be something like um, something that was nonpolar. So let's do carbon um, methane. Uh, so something that's completely nonpolar would just have London dispersion forces. <clears throat> and this means it would have a lower um, melting point and boiling point. And let's just think about room temperature. Um, that's 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, room temperature methane has already boiled. It's already a gas at room temperature um, because its intermolecular forces are so weak. Now let's consider something that has London dispersion forces and dipole-dipole interactions. This will be something that is a polar molecule. An example of this might be something, um, something like, uh, let's see, uh, hydrochloric acid, HCl. This has a dipole moment um, like this. So it's a polar molecule. Um, and if we think about what it phases at room temperature, this exists as a liquid. And so it hasn't boiled yet. So we would have to increase the temperature to boil it into an actual gas. Um, and that is because it has stronger interactions between each of the molecules. They'll line up so that their dipoles interact with one another. So my partially negative end of one molecule interacts with the partially positive end of another. And so it has a higher boiling point. So it exists as a liquid um, at room temperature. Uh, and then lastly, let's think about ones that have hydrogen bonds. Um, so these are going to have even stronger interactions. Something that is hydrogen bonds oftentimes also has London dispersion and dipole-dipole interactions. It, it could be, though, that it has hydrogen bonds but no dipole-dipole interactions. Each molecule will have to be assessed on its own. So these can be nonpolar or polar. They're often polar, but they all have an oxygen-hydrogen bond, nitrogen-hydrogen bond, or fluorine-hydrogen bond, or more. So let's look at water. This has two hydrogen bonding interactions uh, because it has two oxygen hydrogen bonds. It's also polar, it has an overall dipole moment. So it has hydrogen bonding interactions, dipole dipole interactions, and London dispersion forces. So this has our strongest IMFs of all of our examples. And at room temperature, it exists as a liquid. And it doesn't boil 
until you raise that temperature to um, 100 degrees Celsius, which is pretty high. So it has a high boiling point for being a very small molecule. And that's because it has such strong interactions between each of the molecules. And to boil them, to turn it from the liquid to the gas phase, we have to break all of those interactions. We have to put a lot of energy into that. So again, this is to reiterate that our, our strength increases um, as we go down here from London to hydrogen bonds. But also we're going to look at how these IMFs um, stack with one another. So something that has London dispersion forces, dipole, dipole, and a hydrogen bond one hydrogen would have greater intermolecular forces than something that just had London dispersion and one hydrogen bond. But maybe something that has five hydrogen bonds and London dispersion forces would have a greater number of, or greater strength of intermolecular forces than something that has London dispersion, dipole, dipole, and one hydrogen bond. So we are comparing always, we're always comparing two molecules. And we compare and ask which will have, of these two molecules, which will have a, a higher boiling point. And it'll always be the one that has stronger and more intermolecular forces. So let's take a look at these list of inter, uh, molecules um, and rank them in order of intermolecular strength. Um, pause the video and try this on your own and I'll then walk through the solution. Okay, so let's look at, um, at each of these and sometimes it really helps to draw the Lewis dot structure, but sometimes you don't need to. And looking at this first one, I have carbon and hydrogen. This is propane or propene. And so for a molecule like this, I only have carbon-carbon bonds possible or carbon-hydrogen bonds. And these are all nonpolar. So I know without building my Lewis dot structure that this molecule can only have London dispersion forces. There's no oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen, or fluorine hydrogen bonds, so it can't have hydrogen bonding, and it can't be polar because there are no polar bonds possible in the molecule. Now, if we look at the next molecule, it's water, uh, which we've discussed already, but anything like this is going to have to have hydrogen-oxygen bonds um, without even building its Lewis dot structure, which wouldn't take too long, hopefully. Um, and we can see that it's going to have two hydrogen bonding interactions. Plus, in this part, you might need to draw the Lewis dot structure. I can see that it has an overall dipole moment um, as well, based on the Lewis dot structure and the lone pairs that create uh, bent geometry. And it has electrons, so it, so it has London dispersion forces. Whoops. As well. All right, let's look at this next one. Um, I noticed that there is going to be a lot of carbon-hydrogen bonds, possibly carbon-nitrogen or hydrogen-nitrogen. And these ones might be polar or hydrogen bonding. So I think this molecule does require um, making a Lewis dot structure to understand what it will actually look like. So let's actually do it over here. C3H9N. So I'm going to start with my carbons linked up. And then nitrogen at the end. And I have nine hydrogen, and I have, um, let's see how many um, unpaired electrons I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Okay, so I can build this Lewis dot structure with single bonds. So I have nine unpaired electrons and nine hydrogens, each with one 
electron. So I can um, finish my Lewis dot structure without any multiple bonds. And in doing so, I create a polar molecule because I will have a dipole moment um, between carbon and nitrogen and hydrogen and nitrogen. And this lone pair distorts my geometry, giving me an overall dipole moment around this nitrogen. So this will be polar. Therefore, it has dipole-dipole interactions. Also notice it has um, two hydrogen bonds. So it also has hydrogen bonding interactions. And it's a molecule with electrons, so it has London dispersion forces. Great. All right, let's look at our next one. We have carbon, hydrogen, and fluorine. Um, so this may be polar, and it also could have hydrogen bonding if there's a fluorine-hydrogen bond. So we'll build this Lewis dot structure too. So we'll come here and we'll start with our carbons in a row, and we'll add, we'll just add fluorine there as well. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great, seven unpaired electrons. And I have seven hydrogen that I need. So I'll put those around um, my carbons bonding to each of my unpaired electrons. And I have uh, a version of this molecule. So here I do have a polar molecule because my carbon and fluorine bond will be polar. However, I do not have a hydrogen fluorine bond. So I have no hydrogen bonding interactions this time. So I only have dipole dipole and I have London dispersion. So now I can compare all of these now that I've listed the intermolecular forces that they each have. And so evaluating each of these four, only one of them has just London dispersion forces. And that's this C3H8. So this is going to be our weakest. We would expect it to have the lowest boiling point as well because of that. So let's look at our other ones. Um, the next one I see um, is the last one, C3H7F. This one has just dipole and just hydrogen, or sorry, and just London dispersion forces. It, it doesn't have any hydrogen bonding. But our other two have um, hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole, and London dispersion, and so does this one right here. So our next strongest, or next weakest, will be our C3H7F. And our water and our C3H9N will be our strongest. And it's kind of tricky to decide which one is stronger than the other at this point. And there's a few things that you can weigh. Um, our C3H9N is a larger molecule, so it will have a stronger London dispersion forces than our water, but our oxygen-hydrogen bond has a greater electronegativity difference. And so it's actually going to have a stronger hydrogen bonding interaction. And now they both have two, right? The water has two hydrogen bonds and the other one has uh, two nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. So everything is the same except the size and the nature of the hydrogen bond. So um, 
when comparing these two, I would argue that our stronger hydrogen bond will have, since hydrogen bonds are stronger than London dispersion, will have a greater effect. And so I would place these as C3H9N would be smaller, but you can even say a little bit equal to uh, water. We could confirm this by looking at their boiling points. And I believe water has a higher boiling point. And so here's our strongest. And that's us ranking them in order. And now we could make predictions about which would boil first, which would melt first, um, which would be more viscous or have stronger surface tension, which we'll discuss in the next video.